Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney Magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. This week at the Tierra Talk Show, we welcome back our cast member corner segment in which we speak to past or current cast members of the Disney theme parks from around the world. This is Debbie Johnson. Thrilled to be able to speak with you, Tammy. It really is a pleasure. It would be great to talk about your beginnings in the entertainment industry before we get into some Voices of Liberty. How did you first get the theater or singing bug? Well, I just kind of grew up singing uh, part of my life. Um, as a child even, in church choirs and traveling and in high school and college, uh, just continued loving it. Musical theater was part of that. Um, Choral experiences definitely was part of that. When I was in college, I auditioned for a group called Regeneration uh, that I traveled with for a couple of years. And uh, all all around the, the country, we did not go out of the country. But part of that opportunity actually brought us to the Magic Kingdom when Disney was only uh, Disney World was like two years old, uh, and that's a whole story in itself. But so before there was even a Voices of Liberty, I was in Regeneration um, and sang on the on the stage, which was not even built yet. They built a stage in front of Cinderella's Castle. Um, entertainment wanted to prove to operations that people really would stand in that castle forecourt and watch a show. The group that I was in, Regeneration, Derek Johnson, who happens to be my husband, is the man who had Regeneration on the road. And um, we were performing, as we always did, a a strongly patriotic program. Um, uh, Sonny Anderson, who was entertainment director for for the park at that time, uh, saw and, and, and Bob Cross, who was another uh, musical um, director, and um, I'm probably not getting these titles right. If you could speak with Derek sometime, he would give it to you all very much more accurately. But um, found us singing at a uh, service club, a rotary club in Jacksonville, invited the group to come and be part of uh, a presidential uh, week between um, Washington and Lincoln's birthday in the month of February. And uh, so I actually got to sing for uh, Disney before I was part of Voices of Liberty. It, it, uh, needless to say, the crowds loved watching a show on the castle stage. And after uh, we performed there for a few years, they built their own stage and established Kids of the Kingdom, um, which was the first group to uh, have regular shows on the castle stage. And of course, it's gone way beyond that now. And what were the initial first auditions like for the Voices of Liberty? Because this was something that it was a musical group that was originated when the park opened in 1982. Right. In 1982, right. And so Derek Johnson, who actually created the group and wrote the arrangements, um, along with some of the uh, Disney um, creative people held auditions in Florida and at that time most of the entertainment and there there was a lot of entertainment but it was mostly there was instruments and there was dancing and and singing but a lot of the singing was lip synced so you didn't have you didn't have live singing shows very much you had the top of the uh, top of the world of the contemporary which was a fabulous dinner show kind of thing um, uh, variety kind of show and had some outstanding singers there 
and and we had some of those audition. But other than that, there there just was not a lot of talent right here, right now in Central Florida do, for this kind of singing. So Derek called people he had known, and I was one of those. I was living in the state of Washington at the time. Um, uh, and there was another, uh, Rich Taylor was um, part of the whole, who later became vice president of entertainment, but at that time he was a, a stage manager, kind of managing Voices of Liberty. Um, he had been involved with uh, the Fred Waring group that sang and traveled. So he had some connections there. So they called people and brought us together. Um, and I, so I actually never officially auditioned to be in Voices of Liberty that very first year. Um, but we all came together in, in August and rehearsed for several weeks and had, um, you know, fittings. And we would go up into the Magic Kingdom every now and then. We'd learn a couple of songs. We'd go up and we'd sing for the entertainment secretaries or we'd go up and put on um, operation costumes and sing over at Liberty Square or, you know, uh, just different places just to see if this was really going to work. Just standing there and singing without instruments, without dancing, without any kind of special effects. Is this going to be effective? And of course it was because the arrangements are so incredible. And speaking of the arrangements, there's just so many songs as an entire group you guys get to sing. I oh, just yeah. adore the selections. How how were these selections made? Did you guys get to at least suggest some songs and some tunes that you could use? Well, in the very beginning, um, it really was completely up to Derek. And they even had a, a, a restriction on what they felt the, the timeline should be. They really didn't want it to be too contemporary. They wanted the music to reflect um, maybe the Civil War and earlier. And there's not a whole lot <laughs> of, of music you can use. I mean, that's Battle Hymn of the Republic when Johnny comes marching home. And then patriotic things like America the Beautiful and God Bless America. And, uh, and then we got, you know, um, God Bless USA, which was, of course, this century. But uh, and, and then folk songs, so your Skip to My Lou and Oh Susanna, and so that's, and, and Derek really was the one, and there was other people in entertainment, the musical directors that might have uh, suggested a tune now or then, or if there were special things they wanted Voices of Liberty to do, like the opening of Hollywood Studios, we uh, sang there, there's no business like show business. Every single country uh, that had an opening at, around the, the lagoon, we sang the national anthem. So that means we learned uh, France's national anthem, or Canada's, or Germany's, or uh, you know Italy. Uh, Japan wasn't there when we first opened. We did not do we did not do that one, but we did the Chinese national anthem. So I mean that was just I mean in those beginning days it was nonstop. We were uh, you know sleeping in hallways and <laughs> having rehearsals, uh, not just learning our show, but then taking part in all the other. Uh, openings and and things that were going on as well it was very very exciting time. I love yeah. I love the selections because you get a lot of young listeners coming in it's and true. they've never heard these songs before. Exactly, exactly, and that's part of what's so wonderful about what we do. And I, I like in my husband Derek. Uh, oh, along with teaching the music and writing the music, it was a, a huge dose of philosophy that he would give us about why we do what we do and the significance of it. And a word that is going around, and we hear it all the time, and, and you know, certainly at Disney too, and it's, it's, it's a valid word, but the word relevant or be, you know, relevance, be relevant is, is a big word. Um, but Derek liked to talk about and we really bought into this. Even more important than relevance is significance. So if something, if, if I want to be relevant, that means I see what you're doing and I want, to, I want to do what you're doing. I want to be like you. And that's okay. But significance says what I have to offer is so important and so meaningful that when you hear it, when you see it, when you feel it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause you to think Maybe diff not maybe not differently, but it's going to cause you to think more deeply, or it's going to uh, 
change something in your heart. I mean, significance is, is such an important thing. So, as we would sing, uh, Skip to My Lou or Oh Susanna, um, you know, songs that children are not hearing today. I mean, they, they wouldn't learn those songs. Uh, it, it still would mean something to these young people. In fact, and I can go on and on, Tammy, with these stories, but, <laughs> but uh, especially when we, we talk about um, Skip to My Lou. That's a song that uh, a soloist would step out, and if, if, if I were doing the solo, I would sing it to a little boy. You know, lost my partner, what'll I do? Lost my partner, what'll I do? And we'd find a little boy to be a partner with. And it's kind of embarrassing, and it's always a boy, you know, five or six or seven years old, and I, and I want him to be my partner. And, uh, and, it, and it's cute, and it's charming, and it makes everyone feel warm and fuzzy. But the interesting thing about that song is, uh, the years later, and I was there long enough that I actually had grown-ups with their own children <laughs> come back with their little boy or their little girl and sit them at the front of the circle just in case one of the Voices of Liberty might pick them. The, the things that we did might not have been current or the latest thing but they were significant, as especially related to who we are as Americans and why, what what is so great about us, and how did we come to be? And a lot of our songs, whether they're the folk songs or the, or uh, you know, we the people, we sang, we sing a rendition of 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 that, you know, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, it's put to music, and we talk about that, and so it's. It's not just entertaining; it's informative, but it's informative in a in a winsome way, in a compelling way. And you've been there since 1982. You you just recently retired this past year, and, and I'm going to yes. miss seeing you perform. You're so kind. <laughs> I wish I had known you were there, Tammy. <laughs> I know. Well, I had no idea that you were leaving, and I was like, oh. oh. But I, I, you know, the the stories you must have of meeting so many different celebrities and. Presidents, you know, you know, and we we talk about this all the time backstage. Who's writing these stories down? <laughs> you know, who's who's talking about who we met today and uh, and what they said or what we experienced? Um, but you know, yes, in especially that very first year, um, Epcot was completely different than any other kind of theme park that had ever been imagined, um, with representatives and young people from all around the world, um, and and the you know the the future world and and the look look at the future and what things can be. Um, so we had a lot of people that would that would come through. I mean, I remember looking up and seeing Michael Jackson or seeing uh, Tom Cruise or Bob Hope or Betty White. They and in those days, uh, guest relation, you know, special hosts would take them upstairs to watch from the balcony, so they wouldn't be, you know, uh, accosted. <laughs> You know, gen, you know, by the people downstairs, but also presidents would come. President Nixon came, and President Carter, and um, would come uh, and and have a private meeting with us upstairs. We would sing for them privately, and so I have pictures with those presidents. And of course, Reagan came, uh, um, and that was a very special experience. Um, uh, and then he, we were later invited. He. He just he loved Voices of Liberty, and we were so honored. Um, but we were later invited to the White House um, at Christmas time to sing for the lighting of the National Christmas Tree, and we sang for the National Press Club, and we had a private meeting with President Reagan and Mrs. Reagan, and um, the White House photographer captured that. So we've got some incredible pictures on our wall of of being with presidents of the United States because of. Um, what Voices of Liberty represented, you know, what a thrill. And and now you're retired, and, and what what yeah. is the latest and greatest on your plate? What How are you enjoying life being a retiree? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, uh, I, so I'm not busy doing that. I'm just busy doing other things. I'm busy with my husband, and um, who continues to write and, uh, you know, be creative, and I'm able to help him uh, take care of things that might have gone undone, you know, like answering letters or 
helping copy music or, or things like that. And just being with him when he travels. Uh, and get, So he has more freedom to just do that creative thing. And of course, uh, I'm a grandma, so when, when the new grandbaby is born, I can just go right now and I don't have to worry about working out my schedule, <laughs> you know, uh, or making sure I can be covered for a week or two while I go to be with the new grandkids, you know. Um, so it's just, it's, it's a great time of life. Um, I'm so, so incredibly thankful for the opportunity I had to be with a group like Voices of Liberty, which is, you know, it's entertaining, yes, but I just always felt um, so thankful and passionate about what we did and what we said, and that it, it used entertainment, it used music, but really we were all about communicating something really important really significant and so that was a wonderful wonderful part of my life my kids grew up feeling really comfortable um, and just like they owned Disney you know I mean they, it was their second place and I, I love that that they had that incredible um, opportunity but now I'm thankful that I had those years and now I'm very thankful that I have those memories and I have new years now and I'm still singing here and there um, you know we're real involved with our with our church here in Orlando and um, so I still enjoy that and finally we'll end with three Disney questions I always ask my guests on the show I call oh. them the fab three they're easy uh, and, okay. we'll, and we'll start with the Donald one which is as a child what Disney film was one of your favorites to see in the movie theater well I remember um, seeing Cinderella when I was just a little girl. Uh, now I cannot remember the year it came out. It was in the 50s, um, but it was it was brand new, and I just was entranced by Cinderella. How beautiful she was, and how how humble, and how helpful, and how you know she just waited to do the right thing the right way. And she, I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Cinderella. And our goofy question, what Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? I just love all, because there's so many characters. I would probably say Minnie, because she's just charming, feminine, but she also knows who she is. And she can, uh, she's a little bit sassy, you know. And I think we could just, we could talk really easily. I would say Minnie. And speaking of Minnie, our Mickey question. If I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? A dream is a wish your heart makes. It was wonderful to talk with you, Debbie. And before we head on out, I always ask our cast members this question. If you could sum up your entire your entire time at the Disney Company, working for the Disney Company, what is the one word you'd use? One word... I really just have to say thankful that I got to be part of such an incredible company doing uh, such a significant thing and impacting adults all the way down to children. Yeah, it was incredible, and I'm very, very thankful. I'll never get over it. <laughs> 